Hey everybody, Cha Cha here. I uh, hope you all are doing good. I hope everybody had a good day today. Um, but anyways, I wanted to come up here. I um, wanted to talk about a couple things. I am um, the first a verse that I want to share that the Lord had put on my on my heart to share, which is from the book of Psalms, Psalm forty two, verse five. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the health of his countenance. You know, I am that verse is really encouraging because you know, when we find ourselves being discouraged and we're going through it and we feel like we're you know, we're all alone, the reality is is we're not alone. God is always with us. But sometimes, you know, we can't always call the people that we would normally call for counsel and prayer and advice because they're busy, we're busy, and, you know, we have to sometimes just start recalling the promises of God from his word, the Bible, and begin to encourage ourselves. And that's exactly where I found myself this past um, Friday where I was just, you know, because I've been going through a lot. And like I said, the trials that I'm enduring are anything but small. But I found myself on Friday just really discouraged and, you know, I, I think what was neat is, you know, the Lord was continuing to speak to me and just bring different encouragement to me, you know, um, just encouraging me, you know, and I praise God for that. And I am, um, but I had to begin to remind myself of different things about the Lord and we're going to learn more about the Lord as we read his word. So that's why it's important when when you're by yourself that you really make time, you know, you carve out some time, you know, every day to read the Bible and get to know the word because the word of God is living, active and breathing. And I'll tell you, you know, I praise God that the Lord has really um, helped me because like I said, this past Friday, I was just, you know, having to recall and, and just, you know, how to encourage myself in the Lord. And then I um, what was neat is like, I woke up and, you know, the following day or so, and oh my gosh, that peace that I felt was just, it was really neat. It was really neat. Um, and I like what somebody had texted me because they had asked how I was doing and I had told them, you know, like, you know, obviously the trials are still there, but that spiritually I was doing better. And they reminded me, you know, that's the beauty from ashes that in the midst of your heartache, in the midst of your trials, oh my gosh, you know, the Lord will like mature you. He will bring you closer to him. He will help you to grow spiritually if we allow him to. Um, so, you know, whatever you're going through, you know, get into the word, get to know the word of God, because sometimes it's those, it's going to be those moments when you can't reach your pastor or you can't reach, you know, um, you're, you know, someone from the church, an elder in the church that would pray with you and counsel you because either you're at work or they're busy, you know, and at that moment you really need someone to talk to. Well, the Lord's always there. But if you get to know the word of God, you know, and you get to read his promises and begin to memorize scripture, you know what, at that moment when you're going through it and you pray and you seek the Lord, man, the Holy Ghost will begin to remind you you know, in those moments when you're really seeking him because you planted the seeds in yourself by reading the word. And it's those moments when the Holy Ghost can like, pull out those, those scriptures and begin to remind you of the promises of God. So I really encourage you all to read the Bible, seek the Lord. And if you're, you know, going through some discouragement, you know, like, you know, Bible says, encourage ourselves in the Lord. And again, that was Psalm 42, verse 5. Um, but something else I wanted to talk about, I, I had a couple of friends and one had posted something and one has shared something with me, um, a prayer request. Um, and, you know, without, you know, like getting, you know, names or anything like that, because that's not necessary. But this is a, a general thing for all women, um, when we're out there and we're getting to know people and we're meeting different men that want to like court us and they want to date us females, you know, 
sometimes women, what we can do is we'll look at a guy and he'll be charming at first because, you know, everybody always puts their best foot forward first, right? And they start to act charming and nice. And all we're seeing is, oh, he's so good looking, but we're not like, what are his qualities? Where is he intellectually? Where's he in life? Does he have some great debt? You know, how is he with his family? You know, like his mom, his aunts, uncles, cousins, you know, like we're not looking at those things. What are his values? You know, what, what, what are his spiritual beliefs in God? Is he a Christian? Well, first the Bible tells us don't be unequally yoked. So it's really important that as a single female and you know, that we, um, that we align ourselves with men that are truly men of God, you know, I am, and I'm not talking about someone that says they're a Christian or they were brought up and, um, you know, maybe they were brought up going to church, but they're not really like serving the Lord and not really practicing their faith. They're just out there in the world, acting like the world, behaving like the world. Let me tell you something. I had, and there is such a decline in how, the standards of some women have just declined, you know, it's like they don't, you know, require chivalry from these men that they're dating, you know, they don't, um, you know, they're settling for men that just intellectually are not where they are. And then, then they complain later, like, oh, you know, like, you know, he's not doing enough or, you know, this bad attitude or, it can be a controlling guy. And let me tell you something. There are always signs I am in a person. Like a person will always give signs. So these men will always give signs to their true colors, you know. And that's why it's important that we really pray and we draw close to God. Because when certain men do want to date us, um, we as females have to look at these men and just, you know, like really step back and, what are their qualities? Lord, is this someone that you want for me? You know, um, and, and a couple of things that you guys can look at is first and foremost, if you're dating a guy and he begins to try to isolate you from your friends and from your circle of people that you would normally, um, you know, hang out with and they're good quality friends, people that you've known for years that have been loyal, faithful friends, and they're trying to pull you from those, from those, um, those people and try to isolate you. That's someone you need to get away from because that person's already showing signs of being controlling and that controlling nature does also, and can also lead to abuse. And I'm talking physical abuse. There's always signs out there. I am, you know, also, when you see a guy and he's just putting everything on credit cards, everything on credit cards, complaining about his bills or this or that, or debt this, debt that, that's a person that's bad with money. So if you want to get involved with someone that is bad with money, then you're going to be having problems later. If you really get serious about this person, you marry them. And then now you're complaining because they're always spending money foolishly and you're in debt. And then now you have this emergency, but no money because your spouse went and spent it all. Um, so that's why it's important we step back. Also, you know, look at their car. You know, how a person leaves their car really is an indication of how they are in life. You know, that was something that someone has shared with me. They were like, you know, when you look at a person's car and if it's just completely chaotic, that's an indication of their life. But it's also what I believe is an indication of their housekeeping skills. You know, I am... Um, you know, for me, you know, I can tell you that recently it, it began to become very clear that, you know, I had somebody wanted to go out with me. And as I began to talk to him, I could just begin to see certain things about him that was like, yeah, no, <laughs> that's not something I would want to put up with. I am. But what I see is that as single women, as, as, as Christians that are really seeking the Lord and who is it that God has for us? The enemy will start sending people that are not of God. And he's trying to like derail us, you know, so it's really important that man, you go in with open eyes when you're meeting a guy, you're talking to someone and I'm, um, and he's wanting to court you. He's wanting to date you. I am. Um, 
and you really want to make sure that you are serving a real man of God, someone that is truly practicing what the Bible says, not how they're interpreting it, but God's interpretation of his word, the Holy Bible. I am. And so for me, I can tell you that it became very clear that man, what was happening was like, man, that is not from the Lord. And I am, I, you can't allow certain things into your life that will derail you a from the, your faith, but B, then you end up getting involved with the wrong person and then you're crying about it later. And let me tell you something, if you're going to struggle in a marriage later because you didn't seek the Lord and you just married someone that, oh, you know, because they were cute, um, <laughs> then that's not, that's not a trial. That's a consequence because then like that would have been showing impatience. But two, you have to realize like something that the Lord has shown me, which is, you know, the Lord has really brought me far in my life and he has blessed me with opportunities and, and growth, you know, and spiritually what God has done, you know, how many of us as parents would give our children's hand in marriage to like, you know, our daughters to a man that can't provide for them, isn't there for them. You know, let me tell you something. When a man comes into a woman's life, he is to be a real man of God. He is to not be a burden, but a blessing. He is to be a provider, not a mooch. He is to be a protector, not someone that runs and expects the woman to do it all. You know, as a strong woman, there are men like, you know, they want to win our hearts, but they don't know how to handle a strong woman. They don't know how to really care and be that person's equal. You know, you always hear people say like, I want to meet my other half so I can be whole. No, that's such the wrong way to view it. You have to be whole in the Lord. You have to know who you are in the Lord. You have to be whole in the Lord. And then the Lord brings the other whole person, the other, you know, your half, your, your spouse, your husband to come into your life. And then you two are two holes together with God as the center of your marriage and God as the center individually of your lives. You know, I'm, um, so it's really important that as women, we begin to gain the right perspective of what we're looking for in a mate. And, you know, I'm, I, you know, I get it, you know, of course, you know, when we meet someone, there's um, an attraction like, oh, you know, that man's handsome or he's charming, but there's so much more you have to look at. There's so much more you need to really begin to view and see, because I'll tell you, I have talked to different women that I have known, my relatives and friends and oh my gosh, you know, you hear their stories and then as they begin to share with me and, you know, in the dating process, I mean, the signs were there that that person was not a person for them, um, but they chose to ignore it and do the typical, oh, love is blind or he's so cute or no, you know, as women, especially as women of God, we really got to seek the Lord and Lord, you guide me, you show me Lord and Lord, if there's someone that's trying to date me and they're not of you, Lord, get rid of them, <laughs> just move them on out, just have them keep walking and keep waiting on the Lord, you know, um, and so my point is, is there are, there are always, um, clues in the, when, as you begin to spend time with, you know, a man, how, um, how he is and how his ways are, you know, for me, it's important that a man open and close the door. It's important when I go to a table that he stands up and pulls my chair out and pulls it in. If I'm eating dinner and I go to get up to go use the ladies room, um, it's important to me that as a gentleman, he stand up when I stand up. Chivalry is only dead in, in your relationships if you allow it. You have to set your standards. And you know what, like I was saying is like how many of us as, you know, mothers would give our daughters just to any guy that won't be there and won't cherish them? No. Well, then how much more is God saying, I created you. I breathe my breath into you. It's literally the breath of God in our lungs. He doesn't want to just give his daughters to anybody. He wants to make sure that when we're 
engaging um, in a relationship and we're going to marry that person, God wants to give us the right one that he knows is best for us. He knows is right for us. So my encouragement to you is seek the Lord. You know, when you're meeting someone um, and you're meeting that man, line them up with what the Bible says a man should be, you know, and, and seek the Lord most of all and let his spirit guide you. Um, but anyways, I, I hope this encourages you. I am. And again, like I said, for anybody that's going through discouragement, really that again, that verse Psalm 42 verse five, and I'll read it one more time. Why art thou cast down? O my soul. And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. God is good and he will help you. Um, and you, he will help you if you allow him to and you seek him. But remember, when God answers, it may not always be the way we want and the timing that we want. If we're going to ask God to answer, we need to ask God to answer according to his will. Um, because God knows what is best for us. All right. Well, anyways, I hope you all have a good night. Thank you for listening and serve and seek the Lord and be blessed. Thank you. Bye-bye.